I, Abigail Marie Barnett, was born into this world on March 6, 1992. I was born in Indianapolis, Indiana at 1.11 p.m. to my parents, Randy and Charlotte Barnett. I was the baby to my six older siblings, a title I still carry today at 19 years old. One of my favorite teachers in middle school was Miss Brown. She was a younger teacher who was always so much fun. Every day we did a different activity. These activities were all things that she had asked her students before doing to ensure we would all not only enjoy them, but also learn from them. She is one of the best examples of Dewey's theories that I know. Her hands-on learning technique and careful planning to keep the students' interests in mind was evident and extremely effective. My parents created a nurturing home life that allowed me to learn in midst of my mistakes. Something simple my parents did was always let us help cook with them. Every Sunday, my dad would make a veggie tray, and every Sunday, I always watched him meticulously cut different vegetables and dreamt of how fun I thought it would be to help. Eventually, once I was old enough to use a knife, he let me help out. This created a Montessori-like environment where I was allowed to make mistakes, but I could also have real-life applications. Ever since elementary school, I have made friends very easily. I switched schools in sixth grade, but still adjusted well and fit in fairly normally. It does not take long for me to have a trusting relationship with a person, because I open up and trust very easily. This relates back to Erickson's psychosocial stages, particularly the first one, trust versus mistrust. Because I had such a loving family and a great home life, I trust people easily and find close friends quickly. During my senior year of high school, I dated a boy for about a year and a half. We got along well most of the time, but we definitely were the couple who no one really knew if we were fighting or not. Our fights for the most part were insignificant and petty, but nevertheless they would dramatically affect my day. Whenever we were fighting, my friends would automatically notice because I was not in my normal positive and peppy mood. My teachers would notice too because I struggled to focus during class when I was usually one of the more attentive students. This is an example of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If some needs go unmet, no matter how high or how low on the ladder, it will affect your mood and actions until it is met. One thing I do not like to do is to get in trouble. I have never been a person to stick up for myself if I was breaking the rules. I would simply apologize over and over again and make sure I was forgiven for my action. In middle school, I was trying to flirt with a boy by hitting him, naturally. My teacher noticed quickly and began to start yelling at me for hitting a person repeatedly. I was immediately embarrassed and actually ran out of the room to escape. My sense of following other people's rules relates back to Kohlberg's ladder of moral development. Obviously, at this time in my life, I was trying to avoid punishment rather than setting my own rules and standards. As a young girl, I remember driving by the same factory every day on our way home from school. Letting my imagination get the best of me, I honestly believe that the smokestack made the clouds in the sky. This creative yet illogical thinking is a perfect example of Piaget's cognitive stage theory. I did not create a new file for the smoke coming out, but rather shaped it to fit an already existing file, like Piaget's idea of accommodation versus assimilation. In my senior year of high school, I took AP Calculus. Why? I'm not entirely sure. But regardless, the teacher in the class is one of the sweetest ladies I know. She sincerely cares about students and does, and does take extra time to work one-on-one -on -one with people who need help. But she is a certified genius. This may sound like a benefit to the class because she has a great grasp on the material, but unfortunately, she struggled to teach the material to us. Her under understanding of it was so high that she could not reach us anymore, like Vygotsky's zone of proximal development. The first time I ever started to care about music was in sixth grade. My teacher encouraged me to try out for Circle the State with song, and I made it. Ever since then, I really dove into music and found a new passion and drive for it. I continued to try out for groups and solos in high school and received the National Choral Award. 
I also applied my love for music in other subjects. In calculus, I used a mnemonic song in order to memorize the quadratic formula. It was set to Pop Goes the Weasel. So it was like x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Musical intelligence, based off of Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences, is one of my strongest learning areas and still is today. My other strongest intelligence is interpersonal. I love being around and talking with other people. A big example of that in my life is when I played soccer in high school. Although we weren't very good, I became extremely close with the girls on my soccer team because we shared a common bond, but also because I was able to reach out, as a team captain, to every girl and really get to know them. This sense of family really strengthened our team. My family plays such a big role in my life. Having so many siblings allows me to, ha to also have so many people to go to whenever I have a problem or a success. Likewise, if a family member is going through a rough time, it really ripples into my schoolwork or work life. Rippling through different systems relates to Broff and Brenner's theory of ecological systems. For example, one of my siblings got into some trouble with the law right around my high school graduation. This time was so scary and stressful for me that I pushed away the needs and attention of my graduation to my siblings' time of need. Knowing where I stand in my development will help me to teach more effectively. When I understand all the theories by these fantastic theorists, my classroom will benefit. It will ultimately result in differentiated lessons and a newfound patience because I will be able to step into my students' shoes and know how they are feeling. I hope to continue to map out my development and grow to be a well-rounded and morally sound human being.